what are we going to do about that ponytail? I know. I'm getting taller. I'm just I kind of like, like slunch I'm over. like out of the shot at this point. You're getting taller this way and smaller this way. Mm, we'll get you a ponytail. <laughs> are you ready to really get into your new ketogenic lifestyle? In today's video, we're going to talk all about macros. What are they and how do we determine our macros for the keto diet? Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. And we talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So welcome to our guide to how to get started on keto. And it is time for step three in this series. Now, if you're new to keto and you haven't seen the first two videos, we really want to encourage you to pause this video right now, go check out step one and two, and we're going to leave a link for those right down below. Now, for those of you who did see them or are just looking to change things up, let's review. In step one, we eliminated all the grains, pasta, and sugars. And in step two, we talked about limiting your eating to just three meals a day to control your insulin levels. Yeah. Now, before we go any further, I want to remind everybody, we are not doctors or nurses. We're not lawyers. We're not any kind of a health practitioner. What we talk about on our channel is based completely on things that we've researched on our own and our own personal experiences. And this is not medical advice. I mean, I have a cat butt <laughs> in the shot here, right? So you should consider consulting a doctor, especially if you have any medical issues. Okay, so now that that disclaimer is out of the way, today we're going to talk about the buzzword that you hear people mention all the time, macros. And macros refers to macronutrients. And there's three of them that we're concerned about when it comes to the keto diet. It's protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Now, protein and fat are necessary for your body, but carbohydrates are not. There is no such thing as an essential carb. Regardless of what you hear people say. So in your body, protein is a building block. It's used for a lot of different things, including building muscle, your hair, hormones, and they can be used for energy. But it's really a last resort when it comes to energy. And in our opinion, Protein is the most important macronutrient, but we're going to get back to that in a little while. Yeah, because next up is carbs. And carbohydrates are your body's main source of energy. When you eat them, your body breaks them down to glucose. Your body stores excess glucose as glycogen in the liver and muscle. And when we limit or eliminate the carbs from our diet, our body uses up those glycogen stores. Yeah, and that's where we resort to the final thing, which is fat. Now, fat has actually several uses, not just creating man boobs. Mm -hmm. um, it's a carrier for your vitamins and it has an important role in physiological processes like blood clotting. But the part we're really concerned about is energy. Fat is your body's backup fuel source when there isn't enough carbs or glucose. Now on the keto diet, we restrict our carbs to train our body to use fat by creating ketones. And we began doing this in the first two steps and now it's time to determine how much that we actually need. Yeah, before we continue though, we wanna say our opinions have changed since we first got started on keto. When we first started, we thought that you needed to eat copious amounts of fat, but after a lot of research and trial and error and some new studies, we no longer believe that. So here's the good news. Yes. We're going to give you a super easy way to figure out your macros and track while feeling full. So are you ready? Now, step one of step three is get off the scale. <laughs> the scale is the devil. And if you use the scale to measure your weight, it's going to make you think that what we're about to tell you is not working. Yeah. We want you to look at the three macros of fat, carbohydrates, and protein. And now we're going to break them down to just two. And that's going to be protein and fuel or energy. 
And the energy is actually gonna be the combination of your fats and your carbohydrates. Now we do wanna say that this is not anything that we have invented. We're not it, that smart. No, <laughs> it actually comes from Dr. Ted Naiman, and we're gonna put a link to some of his videos down below. Mm -hmm. In addition, we've studied a lot with Dr. Eric Westman, Amy Berger, Maria Emmerich, and we've been working with Bronson Dant on a personal level. Yeah, now before we go any further, we wanna say this. What we're about to tell you is probably going to go against everything that you have ever heard or believed, but bear with us. Do not throw any produce in our direction. We did not wear any rain slickers or anything like that. Yeah. So you've probably heard Dr. Ken Berry say on more than one occasion that counting calories is actually stupid. Yep. You know, he's big about mincing words. Yeah. So he says all the time to eat one or two times a day until you're comfortably full and don't have any snacks in between those two meals. And this absolutely works except us. There's a problem for that with us. Mm -hmm. First, Rachel and I are food addicts who snack, sneak eat, eat to our emotions, and I have been on more than one occasion known to do drive-by refrigerators where I walk past the refrigerator and grab a piece of cheese, a berry, a piece of meat, anything that happens to be there. So far as sticking my hand into a bag of shredded cheese, globbing it up into a ball and shoving that into my mouth. I am not the only one doing that <laughs> in this house. I always wonder why we never have any cheese. Mm. So... It's a little difficult for us to not have any calories in between meals. Yes, it is very difficult for me not to, to binge eat or do the drive-by thing. Okay. So more importantly, what if you're like me and you don't even know what comfortably full feels like? Yeah, so here's what we're going to do. The first thing that we're gonna need to do is figure out what is your lean body mass? And there's a few ways you can do this. Number one, if you know your body fat percentage, this is super easy. You're gonna multiply your current body weight by your body fat percentage. Now, if you don't know what it is, the best thing to do is go get a DEXA scan or a BOD pod or an in-body scan. Um, now, if you don't have access to any of those, you can use some pictures, which I'll put down below, to kind of guesstimate it. But I really would suggest not doing that because if you're anything like me, you're gonna look at the picture of the big fat guy and be like, yeah, that's not me, I don't look like that. Right. And now you may be doing yourself a disservice. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do is if you have no access to any of those scales or scans or anything like that, is simply use your goal weight. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Mm -hmm. So if your goal weight is say 150 pounds, then use that number. Yep. Maria Emmerich also has a neat trick on her calculator page based on your height, and we'll link that down below. Now that you have your lean body mass, this is super simple. I mean, this is so simple, like you're going to laugh at how easy this is. Yeah. You're going to eat at least, and I said at least that much protein in grams per day. That's the protein. Then you're going to eat up to that much in carbs and fat combined. That's it. That's all you're going to have to worry about. We're not gonna look at all at calories. We're gonna go a one-to-one -one ratio. 150 grams of protein, 150 grams of fat and carbohydrates combined. So what do you mean by up to that much carbs and fat? Okay, so what I want you to do is keep your carbs, number one, as low as possible. And I only want you to look at total carbs. Seriously, only total carbs. Yeah, now we'll talk about that later. But we're not telling you to keep your total carbs under 10 or 20, which you're gonna hear a lot of people talk about. Nope. What we're saying is just use total carbs, but it's okay to go a little bit higher. Now, I wouldn't go over 40 to 50 total carbs, and even then, only go that high if the carbs are coming from like whole foods, things like your veggies and your meat. Yeah. Now, if you wanna use net carbs, I completely understand that. Even though net carbs is like a made up word and we're gonna talk about that later on. Yeah. What I want you to do is still keep your total carbs under 40 to 50. If using net carbs is gonna keep you from sugar and grains, use net carbs. Right. But really look at total carbs. Yeah, and this isn't a license to eat a few Oreos because it will fit in your macros. Yeah. Now that's just gonna screw you up. Remember, before your body uses the fat for ketones, it uses carbs first. So the more carbs you eat, the more that you have to go through all of that before you get to the fats. Yeah, which is again why you wanna keep it as low as possible. If you can keep your carbs to 10, that's awesome. That means you only have 10 grams of carbohydrates before you get to the fat. 
Now, speaking of the fat, understand that your body has stored energy, like these man boobs, right? So that's what we're trying to tap into. Like, right. I want to get rid of this and get rid of this and get rid of this, right? <laughs> I want to get rid of all of that stuff. But in order to get to that fat, we have to burn off any dietary fat. Right. So what that means is you can eat up to the 150 grams of fat and carbs combo, but you cannot go over it. Okay, now you can go over your protein. You just cannot go over your carbs. Right. It's okay though to stay under them because if you stay under them, then that's less of your dietary fat your body has to burn before it gets to your man boobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now I also want you to not go too much under. First of all, your body needs at least 50 to 80 grams of fat per day just for the vitamins and also to avoid any kind of protein poisoning. Also, that fat is going to help give you some energy. Mm -hmm. If you under eat the fat, you're gonna risk slowing down your metabolism. Because remember, the one to one ratio that we're talking about, that is homeostasis. That's where your body wants to be, one to one. If we go too much down on that energy, we're gonna have some issues. So we wanna come down a little bit, but not too much. Absolutely. Now, one thing that we want you to remember is this is not a sprint. Yeah. It's a marathon. Don't try to drop 30 pounds in a week. Half to one pound a week is a really good weight loss. Also, there may be other things going on like building muscle and losing fat at the same time. Right. And that's why we say that the scale is the devil. Get off the scale unless you are using it to measure body fat and muscle muscle mm -hmm. and pay attention to how you feel and pay attention to your measurements. And that is a hard thing. Believe me, we have the in-body scale, which I will leave a link for down below. And for us, it was worth the very expensive $300 investment because it gives you a tremendous amount of data. But it is very hard for me to ignore that big number on top. It puts this big weight number, but you really need to ignore it. If you have been under eating, there is a chance that you may drop a couple of pounds in the first week or two and then hold steady for two, three, or even more weeks. Brace yourself. That doesn't mean that this lifestyle isn't working. And I'm speaking from experience. When I started eating a one-to-one -one protein to fuel ratio, I lost six pounds in the first two weeks, but... But... I gained five pounds back over the next two weeks. And I experienced something similar and we both wanted to quit. Yeah. Then I took a closer look at the numbers with Bronson. Now during that four week period, when I went from 204 to 202, I went from 50 pounds of body fat to 43 pounds of body fat. There you go. And I went from 86 pounds of skeletal muscle to 90 pounds. So. My body fat went down. My skeletal muscle went up. I went from a 25.5% body fat to 21.5% in four weeks. And my basal metabolic rate went from 1,850 to 1,930, which means I get to eat more. <laughs> That's good news. Now, in the next episode of How to Get Started on Keto, we're actually going to address a very controversial topic that we briefly touched on earlier. So make sure you set up notification for when that video comes out. And before we even continue, I do want to ask you, please, if you're getting anything out of this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. Yeah, but until we get into that next video, remember, this is about improving your health. Mm -hmm. The weight loss is a side effect, but it will come. Yeah, now while you're waiting for this next video, I actually have some homework for you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to make a list of all of the medical issues that are currently bothering you. And they could be anything, yep. okay? It could be you're having problems with mobility. You have arthritis. You have sleep apnea. You have diabetes. It could be something as simple as you can't bend down to tie your shoes. Or you could be like me where you had to crawl to the bathroom in the morning. Exactly. After you make that list, I want you to make a list of everything that you would be able to do if those issues go away. Right. Okay. Now, I want you to ask yourself, 
if you never lose one pound, and I'm not talking about size, I'm talking about pounds, okay? Right. So you may stay the same weight, but get smaller, but you heal some of those issues. Would it be worth it? Yeah, it's a good thing to, to contemplate. And I have some homework too. Okay. I want you to make a list of your whys. Now your whys could be better health, your children, your spouse, your grandchildren. Then I want you to just post some pictures or words all over your house. I like that. To remind yourself of your why. The only thing I ask is that the very first why is because you want it. Yeah. Say because you want it. And make sure you post that somewhere where you're going to see it every single day. Well, that is going to be the end of part three of our five-part series on how to get started on keto. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, make sure you take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we hit another step, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.